Tonight, if you love old LA, get ready. We're off on the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood tour. Martinis at Musso's, horseback riding in the Hollywood Hills. This is as vintage LA as vintage gets. Welcome to the SoCal Scene, I'm Melvin Robert. All right, everybody, it's time to take a trip back to LA in the 1960s. Car radios were tuned to KHJ, Batman and Robin were the stars of primetime, and food was served up at Musso and Frank's Grill. Well, some things never change. Quentin Tarantino's film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, recreated much of that era using actual locations around SoCal. So get ready to tour some of the film's primetime locations. And who else but the SoCal scene's Allison Martino is our guide. The late 1960s were a memorable and tumultuous time for Los Angeles. Hippies were protesting the war in Vietnam. Clubs on the Sunset Strip were launching bands that were forever changing popular music. And the 60s counterculture gave way to a new generation of filmmakers who were creating a whole new Hollywood with provocative films and storytelling. In Quentin Tarantino's latest film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the director who grew up in Torrance pays tribute to these mesmerizing times, with Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, and Margot Robbie starring in this LA-based fairy tale that features a bit of revisionist history. And yes, I've seen it, 10 times and counting. Last year, Tarantino turned back the clock on Hollywood Boulevard, making it appear to be 1969 once again to commemorate the release of the digital on-demand edition of the film. Sony recently took us on a bus tour of LA shooting locations to describe how they turned back time by 50 years. Rick Schuler is the film's supervising location manager and Barbara Ling is the production designer. And we knew it was ambitious, um, but it was really the, the look of what we wanted. A portion of Hollywood Boulevard was shut down and transformed to 1969. There was Peaches Records and the Supply Sergeant that is still open today. Pink vinyl sheets and paint transformed Joseph's Cafe on Ibar Avenue into Pandora's Box, a music venue that was once a teenage club on Sunset Strip. So partly coming here as was a stucco building. It had kind of flat surfaces uh, that we could do the painting. And then the reverse sort of brought in more of, uh, it's like bringing 1969 architecture to our, to our set. I was there the night they filmed on Hollywood Boulevard and shot this driving scene near Musso and Frank Grill. Storefront facades, posters, and painted murals all added to Tarantino's vision of 1969. Here in Westwood, there's a scene of Sharon Tate at the Bruin Theater watching her movie. The building and entire intersection were turned back in time. Both the Fox and the Bruin were very generous, and the night before we shot, allowed us in the middle of the night to take their LED pieces off and put on our facades to recreate the um, marquees. And the theaters were, were great too. We had to build a projection room inside the theater because the projector no longer was the kind of projector we wanted. So uh, we took seats out and did all that kind of stuff. Then it was off the bus and into Moose and Frank where pivotal scenes were filmed. Ariane Phillips is the costume designer. Quentin um, and I talked a lot, and he has a reputation of being very detail-oriented, and I am as well, and I think we kind of had that in common. And, you know, he writes character descriptions in very richly layered uh, ways, and there is so much there. So he, you know, he's a, a wonderful director in that he has a visual sense that's written into the script, but then he also challenges and invites me to bring my ideas as well. The opening scene when the boys walk in. They're wearing that this right leather there. jacket. Yeah, yeah. Like, how do you find the right leather jacket? You must have looked at so many. <laughs> well, we made a lot. And it's so, so California, so Los Angeles, 1969. Well, coming from you, that's a huge compliment, oh, so thank you very much. Also at Moose on Frank Grill this day is Julia Butters. The 10-year-old actor has a scene-stealing turn with Leo DiCaprio in the movie. And Shannon McIntosh is one of the film's producers. And Quentin said, I'm going to go back to the streets. We're going to recreate 1969 in the spots they actually were. I don't think that's ever been done before. 
You know, no, you found what was no, still there. Yeah. <laughs> so often people will say they're doing it, but they do it now with visual effects. Well, Quentin's an in-camera guy, so everything except for a little, you know, removal of signs or something is real. There are a few remnants of the film left in place that you can still see if you know where to look. On Hollywood Boulevard, there's the ad for the ABC TV series, The Invaders, near the Vine Theater, the painted front of the fabled Aquarius Theater located at 6230 Sunset Boulevard, and the Elaine Hainlock murals of Charlie Chaplin, Mae West, and W.C. Fields are next to the Moose on Frank parking lot, painted especially for the film. That was the best acting I've ever seen in my whole life. In Leo's case, in, you, you, I find him to be most vulnerable with, in, in your scenes. What mm -hmm. is that like when you saw that scene on, on film, it, that it was completed? It was so cool to watch it all unfold as the story would go and as it would play. I would learn more about the role and about the movie and about back then. Right. And back then. Yes. So Quentin's love letter to Los Angeles, 1969. <laughs> right? The Once Upon a Time in Hollywood road trip concluded at Sunset Ranch, where stunt coordinator Zoe Bell shows off how some of the film's stunts were choreographed. When you see the film, look for all the locations that were painstakingly transported back to 1969. It's more than just a celebration of our city's past. It's Quentin Tarantino's love letter to Los Angeles. Don't you forget it. Allison Martino Forrest, thank you so much. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is available now to stream on demand. It's on Blu-ray and DVD starting December 10th. The SoCal Scene will be right back.